important. So my presentation will be about a study that we did last year, actually only this year, on <laughs> only this year, um, leading us to self-test for HIV. Okay. Um, so unlike Vietnam, we don't have a self-testing uh, service delivery program yet. So this is the first step to collect some preliminary pre data on the willingness, the preferences on the self-testing um, service program. So um, my title includes the study inclusive tank. We intended to, to include MSF and transgender women, but unfortunately we only have five participants of who are transgender women. Um, so for introduction, um, I, I think um, we all know that uh, MSF and TGs are a very high risk for HIV. And um, last, in 2017, the Ministry of Health of Malaysia reported that half of new HIV cases were attributed to homosexual and bisexual transmission. And as you know from uh, Dr. Kibberley's uh, presentation, HIV self-testing offers a lot of benefits, including convenience and privacy, okay. and also it empowers these marginalized populations to self-test. Okay. So the objective, objective of the studies are three. Factors, we want to determine the factors associated with, with intention to use um, to do self-testing in the next six months. And also, we would like to uh, find out the preferences of uh, self-testing, especially for the, the pre and post support when, um, when they get um, self-tested. Okay. So the methodology, we did an anonymous online survey between um, January and April this year. We promoted the survey on uh, several social networking sites, uh, such as Grindr, Hornet, and Facebook. And also we have help from a PT Foundation, class, and other NGOs to promote this survey. And uh, you, can look, you can see these are the um, inclusion criteria. So we um, excluded, uh, obviously we have to exclude uh, MSLTG who are uh, HIV positive, because uh, they have to be negative to, to use testing, self-testing. Um, I was told I only have 10 minutes, so I have to run it very fast. Okay, so I will only keep the, the main findings to you. Right. So, um, the, so these are the five findings. So we have five, 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 550 uh, MSN and TG who completed the, the, all the questions in the surveys. And we are majority of them um, below age of 18. Okay, so uh, majority are MSN. And um, so half of the respondents are Malay ethnicity, and they are um, followed by Chinese, Indians, and mixed ethnicity. And majority have very high education level. Um, they are professional and uh, managerial. Okay. Um, consistent with the the, 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 the past online survey that I've done, seventy percent about. 30% of MSM recruited for online surveys have never tested before. Okay. So about 30% never in their life, although they are known to be high risk for HIV. Okay. And the, the main places for those who have tested before, we ask where they tested for HIV. Um, majority from government clinics, hospitals, and also private clinics and hospitals. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so we asked the participant, what would be the most important barriers to do HIV self-testing? And 38% of them say that uh, I'm afraid of positive result. Yeah. Followed by um, the second um, most important barrier perceived by the participants were they were concerned with the accuracy and quality of the test kit. Okay. And then we asked them, uh, the, what would be your, the most important benefits to HIV self-testing? And the majority of them answer is because the, the testing, self-testing offers privacy. Okay. And also it's convenient. Okay. And we ask them whether they have ever used an HIV self-test kit before. 25.8% said yes, they have ever used a test kit before. Self-testing kit. And this is the main outcome of the study, intention to use HIV, to do HIV self-testing in the next six months. And you can see 
oh, about 75% said that they are likely and very likely to, to self-test for HIV. And then we did a univariate and multivariable logistic regression. Um, I just want to highlight the main results. Uh, HIV stigma and, um, is one of them. So if they answer yes to these statements, I feel embarrassed when peers discover I'm getting tested for HIV. Then they are, they are more likely to, to intend to do self-testing. And also these statements, I feel discriminated of being mistreated or judged by healthcare provider if they know of my sex, sexual identity. They are also, um, actually this is a not significant in multivariable analysis. And then we did uh, this control analysis. So control analysis is a, a standardized state, stated preference methods to assess how MSF value various attributes of hypothetical self-testing programs. So we have uh, these uh, eight hypothetical scenarios from A to H. And actually when we program the quadrix, it's random. It doesn't even does come from A to H. So it's, it was every time participant take a survey, it will be random. And in each scenario, uh, has different attributes, right? And then a combination, so this combination of cost, methods, privacy, support, test, test accuracy, and type of test gate, right? So we, we ask them which scenario would they most prefer and ask them to rank, okay? So they have to rank for, uh, from top to bottom, which are the one they have the most preferred of these eight hypothetical scenarios. So, uh, so when we did the analysis, it turns out that the, the attribute cost is the is um, the most important attribute, followed by privacy and then accuracy. Okay. So, um, and you can see here. So these are the different scenarios and um, scenario uh, F, the one that says is free, that name is not needed. Accuracy, high accuracy, and this uh, has to be home delivered and a fingerprint um, test kit, and with the support by telephone hotlines and WhatsApps. This is the, the most preferred scenarios. Okay. So, as I mentioned before, cost, privacy, and accuracy are the, the attributes that, that, that people value most. So we also asked a separate uh, questions about the most preferred type of specimen or uh, any uh, test kits. So most, as consistent with the uh, control analysis, most 69% said that they prefer the blood, the blood-based capillary test kits, followed by oral fluid-based saliva test kits. And we asked participants, most, where's the, the most preferred place to get HIV test kit from? And um, online is the, the most preferred place, followed by retail pharmacies and healthcare facilities. And the most preferred HIV self test collection methods is delivered by post. More than half of them say that they prefer the test kit to be delivered to their home address, to an address, okay, and also to in a box or machine, uh, machine in a discrete location and followed by a video by, by a runner. So we asked about cost, because cost is, became a very important attribute, right? So we asked about, the question was asked, what would be your max, the maximum price that you would definitely pay for one unit of HIV self-test kit? So 50, less than 20 million. So when you, when you when you increase, so when the price increase, uh, the they will not want to pay. And we also asked a lot of questions about pre-test and post-test uh, uh, support. Right? So uh, we asked what kind of uh, methods they would prefer for, for getting uh, pre-test counseling. Seventy-three percent said that they would prefer written leaflets followed by uh, online videos. We also ask question about instruction on how to use the HIV self test test kits. It's the same. Okay. And uh, pre test support. Similarly, 
Majority prefer written leaflets followed by um, online video. And there were also discussion uh, previous, in the pre pre uh, previous presentation about linkage to care. So we asked about information for further testing and services for HIV prevention care. So, um, oh sorry. Um, so it's, again, still re written leaflets and online video. And post-test uh, support. So for post-test support, uh, written leaflets followed by uh, smartphone applications are the preferred delivery methods for post-test support. And uh, for counseling support, so we asked if the test was positive, you know, uh, what kind of methods would you prefer for the, to receive counseling support? Interestingly enough, 85% uh, said that they would prefer face-to-face -face, uh, consultation, uh, followed by WhatsApp and WeChat, and uh, instant messaging. So in discussion, more than two-thirds of participants expressed their intention to self-test for HIV in the next six months. So this is a very high and the first study to um, report that, um, to give this evidence. And uh, especially those who feel that they, would, uh, they, are, they were embarrassed when peers discovered that they were getting HIV tests, they were more likely to conduct HIV self-testing. So cost, privacy, and accuracy are the, the three most important attributes in the, uh, in the preferred HIV self-test service delivery model. And uh, in the study, most prefer blood and finger prick test kit, and they prefer, prefer, prefer online platform to order and purchase test kits, and they prefer the test kit to be de delivered to the address. And for the cost, um, about 20 million or lower would be ideal. Uh, in conclusion, okay, so, so what, where should be the actual test kit distributed? It should be online and retail pharmacy. Um, from the findings from the study. And who should distribute the HIV self-test kits? So the participants said that they prefer them to be mailed to their home address, their address. And what services and support tools should be offered? So uh, for, for pre-test, it should be written leaflets and, or online videos. And for post-test, if reacted, it should be face-to-face -face for, uh, for counseling. And we need to have a pilot study after this. So this is uh, the first study that provides some data on uh, HIV self-test and also the willingness by um, MSN. That is all. Okay.